Hey creatives and welcome to Cinema Sunday. Before we jump into Cinema Sunday, I just want to say I've taken a little time off. Been kind of sick, so apologize for the maybe scratchy voice. But back to being consistent. And with that being said, let's jump into Cinema Sunday. And we're talking the Italian master of color theory, Dario Argento. Let's get started. All right, guys, so I realized as I was doing these top fives for Cinema Sunday, I really haven't talked about the person that I was doing the piece on. So new kind of format. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the person that we're talking about, and then we'll jump into the top five uh, films that I think you need to see. So today we're talking about Dario Argento, the master giallo, uh, the master, in my opinion, of color theory in film. His use of color to, to drive your emotion, color as a character, is outstanding. And so though many of his movies are a little, to us, probably a little cheesy and campy and a lot of his storylines don't really, they're kind of convoluted and maybe don't make sense, they're abstract. Let's use the word abstract. It, he is definitely someone, if you are into film, that you should know and you should see. In America, probably the most uh, famous movie that he's ever done, if you're especially if you're into horror that you've probably heard of, is Suspiria, which by the way does make it onto my top five. And honestly, that's probably his most famous, the one that probably got the most uh, face time with Americans. But there are so many others, including two others that go to that trilogy, that you should definitely take time out to see. So he was born in Italy, of course. His father was a film producer, so he already had at an early age a taste for the business. And so he just followed his passion and created films that he really felt passionate about. So guys, that's my little workup on him. There will be a, a more detailed workup over on my blog. And guys, if you're looking for any other great content on Film of the Written Word and you're, uh, you're a reader, you can head on over. I'll put a link in my description below to my blog. I do daily blogs. And of course, they're about Film and the Written Word uh, where I do author bios, book reviews, film reviews, just kind of all kinds of like history kind of stuff on commentaries on film and the written word. So if you're interested, check it out, head on over, link is in the description. So let's go ahead and jump into the five Dario Argento films I absolutely think you need to see. Number five is Tenembre, which is the third installment of the Three Mothers trilogy. So it's actually of the three, the one that probably has the most coherent storyline. A uh, writer arrives to Rome, he realizes that a serial killer has taken his works and used him as his motif and then it gets all entangled in the police investigation and, and it becomes this whole like psychological thriller, horror slash crime story. Amazing. And of course, the biggest thing about this film and honestly, the biggest thing about all five of these films is Argento's understanding of the psychology of color. It is a proven fact that colors can elicit certain emotions and he uses color as character. Color in his film is as much a part of the film as the story and as the characters. It becomes part of the world you're watching. So you know, you, when you watch these films, pay attention to how he cuts the color, how sometimes they'll be red in the scene and it's really strong, but in the back it'll be blue. Like there's all kinds of this kind of thing, the use of light to highlight colors. He, his vision is so genius that you almost sometimes don't even need to listen to the dialogue to understand what's happening in the film if you just pay attention to the lighting and the color. So that was number five, Tenembre, uh, 1982. 1982. Check it out. Amazing. So let's jump into number four. Number four is The Bird with the Crystal Plumage. Long title, but it's his very first film, 1970. So a writer witnesses an attack and becomes the focus of the attacker's stalking. So basically begins to stalk the writer. And you'll notice in a lot of these films, he has a creative as a main character, and I think that was something that was super important to him that he really, you know, resonated with. So I think the fact that a lot of his has they have dancers, they have writers, like, you know, musicians, everything was in enwrapped in that. And uh, I, I think that it was probably a major key, and I honestly hadn't even thought about it till we were just talking about it now. But check it out, and you guys know how I feel. You should see the very first film of any director that you are passionate about or want to get to know, because it is, once again, as I've said before, the probably the most purest his vision will be, because 
he hasn't been touched by, you know, people telling him what to do and everything. He just really wants to make a film. Number four, Bird with the Crystal Plumage. Number three is the second installment of the Three Mothers trilogy, and that is Inferno 19, 1980. And this is, you know, a, a, the storyline's a little less coherent. I think if you watch all three of the Three Mothers trilogies together, I think you it would be a pretty cohesive story. Just uh, like little segments in like overall arcing uh, story. So plot line of this, it's basically the story goes like this. Uh, a young um, artist in New York uh, buys this book called The Three Mothers at, from a used bookstore and she reads it and things start happening and her brother who is across the globe in Rome has kind of the same issue happening and basically it all boils down to the idea that the three mothers are three different facets of witches and it comes into this and they're trying to, you know, have this evil plan or some or whatever but basically people start dying and go on and so forth the the girl goes missing and so the brother comes back from Rome trying to find her and gets embroiled in the same kind of issues but he already had been it's it's convoluted it's it's something you really have to see some some of the the plot lines for his movies are really hard to describe when you're talking but i'm actually actually doing a retro review on inferno in the coming week over on my blog as well it'll be a little easier and more detailed there so that was number three uh number two is opera that was 1987 uh this one actually might be pretty well known for those who watch horror too opera was pretty uh got a lot of play amongst the horror fans and so it's it's so hard to, to, to describe his films. So the plot line goes like this. To boil it down, it is kind of like Dario Argento's version of Phantom of the Opera. Uh, opera singer starts being stalked by this crazy person and it goes all around and gets convoluted. And, and so he, the, the stalker wants to make her his and basically doesn't want anybody else to have her. Like I said, it's kind of like Dario Argento's version of Phantom of the Opera. Uh, once again, use of color and light Honestly, the main reason you watch any of Dario Gentra stuff is because of that. His directing is really great. This, like I said, the storylines are a little cheesy, but I, I would check it out. Now my number two is opera. So that would mean my number one, and it's number one for a couple different reasons, and that is Suspiria, 1977. And the couple reasons are like, it's a nostalgia piece for me. It is the first uh, Dario Argento film I ever saw. Fell in love with them and just had to rush out and try to find other of his stuff. And because it is probably the most well-known in America, uh, it got more play. Um, and of course, on top of the fact, his the use of color and and lighting in, in his film, this film is amazing as well. So the plot for Suspiria is, so plot for Suspiria is a young ballet dancer attends this really prestigious ballet school in Germany. And through Strange Happening comes to realize the school is actually kind of uh, the front for some, some, kind, some sinister stuff happening. In the Three Millers trilogy, which this is the first installment, each installment has to do with a different one of the three mothers and I'm not even gonna try to pronounce all their names, but each one has, it's kind of like the maiden mother crone idea. And so the ballet school is actually a front for this sinister uh, happenings and they're trying to, you know, complete their evil plan. It's amazing, check it out. It's kind of like a classic, it is definitely a cult classic, but it is definitely a classic horror film that I think kind of gets overlooked by the American blockbuster, like, super promoted horror films of that. Not to take anything away from them because my favorite, my favorite horror movie of all time is Halloween. And so Dario Argento is one of the, is if you're into horror, especially if you're into horror, you need to know who Dario Argento is. And if you don't, just check out these five films. Like you'll definitely have a great introduction to Argento and then go out and check out some more of his others. All right, guys, so that's it for Cinema Sunday. If you like the video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And please remember, I'll put links in the description below to everything I just did. They are affiliate links, so thank you ahead of time for supporting the channel. If you're digging on Cinema Sunday, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And that's it for this. So until next time, guys, safe journeys.